find the unit tangent vector and the principal unit normal vector for the following parameterized curve. And here we are given the vector valued function r of t defined by the components 4 plus t i hat plus 8 plus the natural logarithm of secant of t j hat minus 9 k hat, where t is greater than or equal to minus pi by 2, less than or equal to pi by 2. So, the first thing that we need to do is find the unit tangent vector. So let's keep in mind, we of course know that the unit tangent vector, capital vector t, is defined by the tangent vector, all divided by the magnitude of our tangent vector. So in order to find the unit tangent vector, we need to differentiate. We need that tangent vector, and then we'll find its magnitude. So here we go. The tangent vector, r prime of t, is going to be equal to 1 times unit vector i plus, so the 8 differentiates to 0, the derivative of the natural logarithm is secant of t multiplied by tangent of t all over the original argument secant of t j hat and then negative 9 differentiates to 0 k hat and we can simplify this of course we know secant divided by secant cancels to 1 and we are left here with the vector 1 tangent of t zero. So that's our tangent vector. There's no scalar multiples, so we can go right ahead and find the magnitude. So we have the magnitude of our tangent vector is going to be equal to the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, plus tangent squared of t plus 0. And look at this! We see a Pythagorean identity. This is, of course, equal to the square root of secant of t squared. So the square and the square root cancel each other out, leaving us with secant of t. So we are now able to go ahead and find the unit tangent vector. We have capital vector t, our unit tangent vector, is equal to the tangent vector, 1 tangent of t, 0. And this is all divided by secant of t. And so, let's simplify this. We can see some nice simplification with our trig identities here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and distribute this secant through to each component of the vector. So this will leave us with 1 divided by secant of t. We'll have tangent of t divided by secant of t. And then 0 divided by secant will just remain 0. So 1 over secant, we immediately know that's going to cosine of t. But let's take a moment and step down and think about tangent of t divided by secant of t. And by all means, if you see it, go for it. So I'm going to separate this out so I'm thinking about this as 1 divided by secant of t multiplied by tangent of t. And using our trig identities, again, we know 1 by secant is, of course, cosine of t. And we know that tangent is equal to sine of t divided by cosine of t. So look at that cancellation. Those cosines cancel each other right out, leaving us with just sine of t. So plugging this in we are left with the simplified unit tangent vector, capital vector t of that arbitrary parameter t. 1 by secant is cosine of t. We know that tangent of t divided by secant of t is sine of t, and 0 remains as 0. So here is the first portion of our answer. This is our unit tangent vector. And we can now use our unit tangent vector to find the principal unit normal vector. So I'm going to give us plenty of room. So part two, 
find the principal unit normal vector. And let's keep in mind here, we know that the principal unit normal vector, capital vector N of t, is defined as the derivative of our unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of our unit tangent vector. So we already have part of this. We have the unit tangent vector above. So we'll use this to differentiate. So the derivative of our unit tangent vector is defined by the components minus sine of t, cosine of t, zero. No scalar multiple, so we can go right ahead and find the magnitude of this vector, or find the length. So putting this into our distance formula, we have the square root of negative sine of t squared becomes sine of t squared, plus cosine of t squared, plus zero squared, which is just zero. And again, we see Pythagorean's identity, woohoo! So this is equal to the square root of one, which of course just becomes one. And we're ready now to find, or to state, the principal unit normal vector. So plugging in what we just found, we have minus sine of t, cosine of t, zero, and that's all divided by one, which we don't even really need because of course that's going to be the same thing. So this is our beautiful final answer for the principal unit normal vector. And now just to be extra safe and make sure we get 100 on our quiz and, and exam, let's check our work. So how can we check to make sure this is correct? Well, we recall that the unit tangent vector and the principal unit normal vector are orthogonal. So we want to make sure, does the dot product of these two vectors equal zero? If so, then we're right. So let's go ahead and check this. So we have the normal vector that we just found that's minus sine of t, cosine of t, zero. And we are dotting this with the unit tangent vector, which is cosine of t, sine of t, zero. So by the dot product, I need a little more room. This leaves us with negative sine of t multiplied by cosine of t plus cosine of t times sine of t plus zero times zero is zero. And would you look at this? These two terms cancel each other out, leaving us with zero. Woohoo! So yes, this does hold true. Confirming our answers for both the unit tangent vector and the principal unit normal vector.